In today's video, we will be looking at the MSI A520M Pro motherboard. So yes guys, this is an AM4 motherboard. Big surprise, I know, <laughs> for my channel. <laughs> I've, I've probably done about 5,000 motherboards for, uh, for AM4 motherboards by now. But anyway, <laughs> uh, let, let's take a look at it anyway. We'll just do a, uh, the usual unboxing. We'll do the usual sort of overview where I go around all the ports and stuff. And we take a look at what this board is, um, you know, if, if this board is for you. And if you want to maybe use it in a flip PC or even your own PC. So... As I said, it's um, the MSI A520M, which is the A520 chipset, and M stands for Micro ATX. So it's a Micro ATX motherboard. Um, you know, some people might like the ATX, but we, we keep it MATX here, Micro ATX for the budget, obviously. Uh, and talking about budget, this was £50 on Amazon.co.uk. So I do think for a brand new motherboard for £50, that's not too bad really. And AM4 motherboards even used are kind of around sort of £45 to £50 anyway, or even a little bit higher if you want to go to the ATX one. So £50 for a brand new board where you don't have to test it, you know it's perfect out of the box. I think it's pretty good, so let's get on with it. And pretty much as you'd expect from a budget motherboard, there's not really a lot here apart from the actual board. <laughs> uh, so let's take the board out first of all. You get a couple of M.2 screws, which is nice, actually about three, which is actually quite generous, I think. Um, our standard SATA, SATA cables, just two of them, that's fine. I don't think there's a, yeah, there's a right angle one. There's a, one right angle one, one standard one. And then obviously our I.O. shield here. So no integrated I.O. shield, but again, this is budget motherboard, isn't it? So I'm not really bothered about that. And here we go, here is the actual motherboard itself. So here's the motherboard itself, and as you can see, pretty tiny. It's obviously budget, so, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, if you want, like, um, maybe if you want your own mobile, um, you know, if you've got your own PC and you really want to make it like a show piece sort of PC, then this motherboard probably isn't going to be for you. But if you're looking for a very budget motherboard, I think I think you should uh, stay tuned and see... see uh, see how we go um, and see if it's for you maybe but I certainly think for budget flippers this is certainly a good option as well. So as, as always we'll start at the top left hand corner and we sort of go around in that circle and then for the PCI slots and the NVMe and then obviously the ports right at the end, the IO ports. So first of all we have our 8 pin EPS supplementary CPU power cable, um, or connector sorry. And that's again just pretty standard. We have again a pretty standard VRM setup on the actual AM4 socket, 4x2 phase I should say. Um, and then there's no heatsink on any of them as well, as well. So be aware that for the more beefier processors, this probably isn't going to be your board. And I would probably recommend up to about 5700X3D I would say for the Ryzen 7. 5700X3D would probably be about right for this board. Um, anything more and you're going to push the board a bit much and I think you could probably do need to get better VRM set up on a board. So yeah, I, I'd probably say up to about that would be fine. I'd cer certainly say Ryzen 5 5600 or 5600X is going to be the perfect CPU for this. So if you are thinking of doing a build, that's what I would recommend with this. And obviously, if you have if you haven't seen a AM4 socket by now, I don't know how you've been living under that rock, but anyway, it's there. <laughs> it's obviously just a standard standard AM4 socket, and it's been around for forever. Well, eight years, maybe more. But anyway, yeah, it it is what it is. Then we just have a CPU fan connector here for your CPU fans. So that's pretty standard. Again, no frills motherboard here. I will say this: absolute no frills at all. This is basic, basic here. Remember, guys. Um, and talking about basic, we only have two DIMM slots as well for your RAM. So only 64 gigabytes at maximum supported here as well. So just be aware of that if you are thinking of maybe going for a really, really sort of top end build. This isn't the motherboard for you. So, you know, just be aware of that. But I don't think many people are going to go up to 64 gigabyte anyway. So most people are going to stay around the 16 or 32 gigabytes. So I can't really see being that... I can't really see that being an issue, but maybe if you've got like four by four gigabyte sticks, and then obviously you can't fill them all up because you've only got two slots. So, you know, 
that that's not going to be perfect but for most people two slots can be enough so i'm not concerned about that and overall i will say the board is actually very small as well i don't know whether it's going to come up on camera very well but it is a very very small small board this so just be aware of that if you maybe want something to fill your case a little bit more this isn't the board so just be aware of that then we have our first fan header uh, for your case fans and I think unfortunately, let's have a look, yes I think unfortunately there is only one supplementary uh, fan header apart from your CPU fan header so you are limited there if you are going to get a case with loads and loads of fans. Um, you could maybe do a splitter but I, I probably recommend maybe looking for a different board or getting some kind of um, fan controller that can do all that in a, in a SATA hub thing and then obviously you don't have to plug in your fans uh, on, into the motherboard itself or, or it just has one connection into that one fan header that would probably be a better way then we have the easy debug LEDs which is actually really nice to see so many times you know you just don't get a boot first time and you're like what's happening so obviously you can see on the debug where what's actually happening whether it's VGA whether it's CPU RAM what have you so that's a nice feature I really like that from MSI well done the big 24 pin um, main ATX power cable uh, connector sorry um, so that's you know, pretty much standard positioning there, nothing to talk about really there. We have four SATA ports, two sort of normal ones here, which which stick out from the board here, and then two at the side, which you can plug in at the side of the board there. So an okay little setup there. Um, I think four, again, four SATA ports is more than enough, especially as there is one M.2 slot as well with this mower board, so I, I can't really see you needing any more storage than that, but maybe for some people they might want to go with an ATX board that has six SATA ports but they are SATA 6 ports or the, the new you know the newest ones and then hopefully you are going to be able to see this on camera but it's going to get a little bit um, small but uh, hopefully we can um, get through it um, it's uh, this is the the connector right at the bottom here the bottom right hand um, connector here is what's called the J rainbow which is basically a f 5 volt 3 pin addressable addressable RGB connector basically so you can connect in your ARGB fans and all that sort of stuff um, so that's really good to see on an A520 chipset motherboard especially at this budget end uh, that's really good to see because um, you know to be able to connect up your ARGB fans your case fans that's that's a nice feature so you can get the motherboard support there so you can control all your fan colors through the motherboard so that's nice to see a really good touch there by MSI well done then we have our JFP1, um, so that's where your front panel headers go, like your uh, uh, power button, reset button and all that sort of stuff, pretty standard. Then we have our speaker port there for your, if you want to plug one of those little speakers in so you can debug your board a bit easier. And then next to that we have the USB 3 port for your USB front panel. Um, so again that's pretty standard but I think it's okay where it's positioned maybe some people might like it at the side here but um, I think it's okay there um, and obviously there's no USB-C support here because this is a very budget motherboard so no front panel USB-C support so if your case has front panel USB-C this isn't the board for you again and how are we doing here um, so two USB-2 uh, front panel headers as well just there hopefully you can see it's going to probably be quite hard on the camera but it'll be okay and we have two ports that I don't really know what they're for and I don't really care because they're not you don't really need them then you have an old school uh, RGB header so that one will be a 12 volt 4 pin header um, and then you just have your HD audio connector there for your front audio on your case so pretty much standard there and pretty much what you'd see on most motherboards there so not not really too concerned that, that that's a decent layout in my opinion all good there so moving on to the m.2 slot which you know i know obviously the pci slots as well so the m.2 nvme support obviously for gen 3 no gen 4 support because this is only the a520 chipset you need to go to b550 if you want the gen 4 support for obviously your PCIe Gen 4 as well as your um, NVMe Gen 4 support, your M.2 support. But there is a very nice heatsink there which actually will cover your M.2 drive so it will keep it nice and cool so that's nice. If you if you haven't got an M.2, if you've got an M.2 which is you know no heatsink on it then that's a really nice feature. 
And then we have one PCIe times one slot. Uh, that's probably for your Wi-Fi, I would say. That's probably going to be the best thing for that or other sort of um, uh, car add-on cards if you need that. But I think most people are probably going to leave that blank. But if you need Wi-Fi, you can do that as well. Then we have our main PCIe Time 16 slot, which is Gen 3, as I said before. Uh, so no Gen 4 support. And that that's more than good enough, really. Again, not, not many graphics cards really utilise uh, Gen 4 anyway, so not really bothered about that. That That is in the second slot though, so just be aware that maybe for very large graphics cards you might get very near the ports at the bottom there, but overall you should be fine. And then right at the bottom there you do have a times one PCIe slot as well. Probably not going to use that one at all I'd say. I'd probably keep the Wi-Fi one where the uh, in between the um, M.2 and the graphics card. So I think that pretty much does it for the actual board and let's just have a look at the rear I.O. now. Um, so pretty, again, pretty bog standard and boring here. But again, it's a budget motherboard and it's going to do what, what you need it to do. So we do have some array of video out, which is obviously nice if you are using like a 5600G or 5700G or any of that sort of stuff. Now I didn't mention it before, but the 3200G and the 3400G are not natively supported here. So you have to remember that um, Ryzen first generation, second generation, and also those two chips are not supported by the A520 chipset, so just so you know. So you need Ryzen third gen, fourth gen, and fifth gen for this board, or 3000, 4000, and 5000 series. So we have um, HDMI, uh, connector there for one video out and then we have a display port for another video out and if you want to go all the way old school as well we have a VGA port there I know believe it or not they still make these things <laughs> I, I can't believe it either but anyway so if you want free outputs there for your uh, integrated graphics you can do so if you want free monitors you can do that uh, most people are probably not going to do that but anyway then we have a very old school PS2 uh, connector again, which I don't think many people are using, but it's there. Then we have two USB 2 ports, and then we have four USB 3 ports. I'll put all the exact details below in terms of the exact specifications. And then we have a one gigabyte Ethernet port as well, so a LAN port there um, for your network. And finally, just your audio ports there, your free standard audio port. So, again, nothing special here. I mean, six uh, USB free, uh, or six USB ports at the back is enough. Most people are probably going to have at least two of them in the front of their case. So, you're going to get at least eight or nine there, aren't you? Um, depending on what your case is. So yeah, I think overall this uh, this little mobile board isn't bad. Like I say, for 50 quid, you know, you can't expect too much again. So you've got to have your uh, expectations, you know, in the right place, shall we say. So overall, I think for 50 quid, not too bad. Um, it, it looks pretty good to me. I don't... The only thing I would say is the brown colour I'm not overly happy about. It, it, it is... I would have liked it to be more black, the actual board, because... If you can see that, that's quite brown and just doesn't look great when it's in the case. But if you've got a, a, a dark tempered glass, um, like um, if you've got like a very dark tint um, tempered glass uh, for your case, a tempered glass side panel for your case, then you won't be able to see that anyway. But I think I think it would have been better just having it blackboard rather than a sort of brown board. But this MSI do do this brown board thing, which I don't really like. But again. MSI do make very good motherboards though, and I will say they're my top manufacturer for motherboards. So I would certainly recommend if you are going to go for a budget build, then go with an MSI motherboard. So again, I'm not being paid to say that, but in my opinion, MSI is, is the premium option for motherboards. So yeah, like I say, I think for a nice little budget build, ideally something like a Ryzen 5, maybe 4500, maybe 3600, maybe even going up to the 5600 uh 5600x maybe you know i think for all that sort of build you could certainly build yourself a nice little pc here you know decent little graphics card maybe something like a 2060 super 2070 maybe even a 3060 3070 you know a nice little sort of you know a little bit more budget but it's going to do you well obviously if you're looking at 4090s and stuff, obviously this is not, not the port for you at all, obviously, guys. But, you know, obviously um, you have you have to 
have your expectations in place for this board. This is not going to be uh, like a, you know, 5950X, you know, powerhouse. So uh, just be aware, you know, and, and choose, choose the right processor for, for your needs for this board if you are going to go for that. Yeah, and overall, I think pretty decent board from what I can see. I don't, feel, I don't see any problems layout-wise and all good there. So let me know what you think of this little board. Uh, uh, leave me a like to like the video and help me uh, in the YouTube algorithm. And obviously, please subscribe so you can see my future videos. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.